The other controls for the radio, you'll see, are on the side of the radio. And there's actually three buttons. There's three buttons on the side of the radio. There's um, an upper, which is a small button. There's an upper small button here. And then there's a large middle button right here. And then there's a lower button. This again, a smaller button. And the, um, the middle button is the button you use when you want to talk. So you'd push this button at least about a second before you wanted to talk, especially if you're using a repeater. And the, the middle button is also the same as the button on the side of the external microphone right here that I'm pushing with my index finger. So this button and this button here have the same function. It's what um, switches the radio from being a receiver to being a transmitter of your voice. Now these other two buttons, the upper and the lower, are buttons that are programmed. So they can be programmed for different functions. But the way that the radio is programmed right now is that, and I'm turning it on again, um, is that the top button we use for setting the power. So if we push the top button once, we hear one beep. We push it again, we hear two beeps. We push it again, we hear three beeps. So the top button, each time you push it, it changes the power setting. And you know what power setting is because of the number of beeps. So one beep means low power. Two beeps means medium power. And three beeps means high power. And you should always use the lowest power possible whenever you're using the radio to talk to anybody, whether it's an emergency or just during the training. So the radio is programmed to always start at high power. So the first thing you do when you go to a channel is to reduce the power and, still, and see if you can still, uh, still activate the repeater and, um, and still communicate clearly to the person you're talking to. So the bottom button is, is programmed to set the, um, the radio from either direct communication, radio to radio, or communication using a repeater. On the bottom button, one beep means that you are doing a repeater communication, and a short beep and a long beep means that you are communicating directly before using the radio you want to charge it and you must first um, plug the charger into your the power in your house the 120 volt power so to do this you must take the, the, the 12 volt power supply for the radio and then plug it in to the back of the charger stand like this you plug it in like that and then and you'll notice on the front of the charger it says orange is charging and green is full so the little LED right here on the left of the screen will be yellow when the radio is charging and green when it's full and we suggest that when the radio is full that you take it off of the charger. And so when you want to actually charge the radio, you simply place the radio into the charger like this, making sure that it's sitting on the back of the charger so the contacts make contact. And then when you plug it in, the light will go on. You'll notice that um, if, you, uh, if you look at the front of the radio, there is a, a point that says mic, M-I-C, and that means microphone. So that this is, if you're, if you're not using the external microphone and speaker, you should talk towards this part of the radio, generally holding your mouth about um, six to eight inches away from the radio is, is probably the best. And you should talk with a fairly loud voice.
Also note that if you hear five short beeps, it means that somebody else is trying to transmit on that frequency. We have now have the radio connected to the microphone and I'd like to give a final note on using the radio. So, you always should, before transmitting on the radio, you should always be listening and making sure that there's nobody else talking. Generally you're already talking to somebody. They'll stop talking and generally you'll hear a beep and that beep means that the, um, the repeater has stopped transmitting. So after you hear that beep, then you can push the transmit button and begin talking. It's much better to raise the radio above your head, always keeping the antenna in the vertical direction. So if you raise the radio up, push the transmit button, wait for about one second for the repeater to kick in, and then you can begin talking. This is WQJK522. When you're finished talking, let up on the transmit button, and at that point, you don't really need to be raising the radio above your head. However, if you're in a place where the reception is poor, the, even just the two feet that you raise the radio by lifting it up with your arm can make a significant difference in your ability to transmit and to receive. So, um, it's always better to be raising the radio up in the air when you're, when you're using it like that. Okay. Well, that concludes our training for the ICOM UHF transceiver IC4011. So I appreciate um, everybody's attention. I also want to mention that the um, ICOM also makes a, a radio that uh, has the numbers 21, and that radio is uh, almost identical to this radio. And so um, even though these, the shape of the radio is slightly different, the function of the buttons is also the same. The next thing I'd like to talk about is squelch. Now one thing that um, radios have on them is a, uh, is a squelch system. And what this does is it, it mutes the static that you hear in between your conversations. So typically when you're not talking or listening on the radio, you'll hear uh, static going in the background. It might sound like this. And the static, in addition to being just annoying, also uses up the battery. So it's not necessarily a good thing to be doing. And you must set the squelch level, the mute level, to be just a little bit higher than the, than the ambient static. And to do that on the radio, you must first put it in the squelch mode. So to do that, you turn the radio off. You turn the radio off. And for me, the best way to do it is to turn the radio upside down and push on the two lower buttons, which actually are now the two upper buttons since the radio is upside down. You want to push those buttons in both at the same time and then turn the radio on and you'll hear a short beep. Once the radio is on, you can turn it back around forwards. And now, since we're hearing continual static on the microphone, I want to raise the squelch level up. So I do that by pushing the upper button. And you may have to push it many times. And at a certain point, the static will stop. And it's usually good to go another five to ten units above that to make sure that you're well above the static because the static level can go up and come down as you just heard right there for a second. Then if you wanted to lower the static level again you push the bottom button. So now you hear the static again. And so if I want to raise it, push the upper button. So there I am about 10 beeps above the ambient static level. That's all it takes. And then when you want to put the radio back into the normal mode, the normal talking mode, you just simply turn it off and turn it on again.